Think of this as a day at the office for Wayne Pukinik. It's dusty work, so he sits outside his house as he carves, coaxing human and demonic forms from stone. Sculpting, he says, earns him a pretty good living. Reasonable, because I'm a full-time carver, and uh, I try to find a job, but it's hard to find a job, so I do my own work. The uh, stone tell me what to make. First I start off the lake, and then I go up all the way up from the lake to the parka and the uh, other arm and the other arm and go to the head. Quite unique in terms of the face, and the head's turned backward, of course. At the municipal office, local artwork is on display for visitors. The village government is trying to help Joe Haven artists sell to collectors and galleries outside. With vast distances and a harsh climate limiting economic opportunities in the north, art and culture have a whole new significance. Some of these pieces could sell at auctions in Toronto or London for tens of thousands of dollars. Well, there's many families over the years that have passed on the stories and passed on the uh, elements of how to carve and how to sew and do all kinds of arts and crafts. And we're trying to escalate and bring up the, the value of what they're doing. From a flat, featureless landscape that looks devoid of life, the Inuit people have lived and developed a rich culture, one that can take a plain rock and turn it into a piece of art like this. And these days, they're managing to even earn a living from it. This is a spirit. International trade lawyer Barry Appleton has one of Canada's largest private collections of Indigenous art. In years of travel across the Arctic, he's got to know the artists and find out why they carve, paint, create art. It's a living, yes, but it's also how they stay intimately connected with the land that provides their food, their inspiration. Having the ability to do art, to use your traditional materials, to know how the land works, that's what they call that, to live on the land, and to express that in your tradition becomes perhaps the most important economic underpinning of a traditional life. Inuit communities like this work hard to keep their way of life alive and relevant to each new generation. One of the best ways to do that is to help artists prosper as they share their culture with the rest of the world. Daniel Lack, Al Jazeera, Joe Haven in Canada's North.